There are many kinds of stones in today's readings. Not the type that strikes our car windows after a snowstorm and heavy application of sand and salt, like during this past winter. Not beach stones, not gravestones, not the rolling stones, not kidney stones or gall stones with which many of us are painfully familiar. I do mean the stones that provide support and strength. I mean stones that help us, like stepping stones, and those that show us the way, like piles of stones called cairns that we find on the tops of barren mountains. I also mean the stones that can cause us to stumble and fall. The ones in our second reading from Peter, who mentions a stone that will make the people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. First, let's focus on the stones of support and strength. One such stone is the capstone. And we find a capstone at the top of a stone archway. It's the finishing and the protective stone that holds all the other stones in place. They won't fall down because of the capstone. Jesus is like a capstone because when we follow his way, when we hold together as a tight-knit community of stones, each being different in many ways, in shape and color, each touching and supporting each other. A related stone is the cornerstone. That's the first stone set on a construction site when a stone building is being constructed. All the other stones are set in reference to that cornerstone that determines the position of the building. Jesus is the cornerstone. And here in this church and in all Christian churches throughout the world, we are all set in reference to him. Our second reading from Peter praises the cornerstone. His letter reads, For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Peter, of course, is speaking about Jesus, whom he calls a living stone, chosen and precious in the sight of God. Jesus is the living cornerstone, and we are all set in reference to him. Therefore, we become living stones ourselves, living stones for those who depend upon us, those who need us for love and for support, for strength. If we don't provide that support and strength, we're just cold, dead stones. There is a story about Jesus and a stone, but not the one that rolled away from his tomb. We've all heard a version of it before, but perhaps without really understanding its meaning. And it goes like this. During the early days of Jesus' ministry, he traveled throughout the desert, and then on the border of that desert, he came across a village that was suffering from a famine. The starving people hoarded what little food they had, and they hid it every place, hid it from their friends and their neighbors. Jesus was told, there's not a bite of food to eat here in this village. You surely should press on. Oh, I have everything I need, he said. In fact, I was thinking of making some stone soup to share with all of you. Jesus asked for a large pot, filled it with water from the village well, and then he built a fire underneath of it. Then he drew an ordinary-looking stone from a pouch that was attached to his, his belt. He dropped it then in the water. By now, hearing the rumor of food, most of the villagers had come to the well or watched from their windows or from the rooftops. As Jesus sniffed the water and licked his lips in anticipation, hunger began to overcome the villagers' skepticism. Ah, said Jesus, I do like a tasty stone soup. Of course, stone soup with beans would be much better. Soon, a villager approached with fistfuls of beans he'd retrieved from a hiding place, and he added them to the pot. Excellent, cried Jesus. You know, 
I once had a stone soup with beans and it was wonderful, but with a bit of lamb, it's, it's tremendous, delicious. Well, a village shepherd heard that. He offered some lamb. And so it went on with fish, olive oil, barley, hardened bread, and so on, all put in the pot until there was indeed a delicious meal for all. The villagers tried to buy Jesus' stone, but he refused to sell it. The next day, he left and traveled to a nearby village where he preached and he cooked again. And the moral of the story? By working together with Jesus, with everyone contributing what they can, a greater good can be achieved. When we don't cooperate for a greater good, like helping those in need and those who are suffering by giving to the food pantry, for example, or maybe St. Vincent de Paul, we're like cold, non-living stones over which other people trip and stumble. Instead of being stumble stones, we need to be stepping stones, helping other people find their way across river and streams of despair and loneliness. We need to be stone cairns, helping others get across and over mountains of hurt and anger and then find their way to Jesus. According to our gospel reading, the one from John, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Indeed, he is the life, and he gives us life through his body and his blood. Who says we can't get blood from a stone? We do get blood from a stone, from Jesus. Our capstone, our cornerstone, and our living stone.